Back in 2021, I covered China's Fujian aircraft carrier when it was still under construction. The Fujian aircraft carrier with its electromagnetic catapult system has brought China closer to Western carrier capabilities. But the real leap may lie ahead. Today, we will explore the Type 004, a nuclear-powered supercarrier that promises to be the largest warship China or perhaps the world has ever built. With projected specifications such as 120,000 tons displacement, nuclear propulsion system, and a 110 aircraft air wing, the Type 004 represents more than just a new ship, it could redefine the balance of power in the Indo-Pacific region. Let's put the Type 004 in context. China's earlier carriers, Liaoning and Shandong, used ski jump ramps and were limited in aircraft weight and payload. The Fujian introduced electromagnetic catapult system, enabling heavier jets and more flexible launch profiles. Yet even Fujian has physical constraints, its displacement was 85,000 tons, and conventional propulsion shape what it can carry and how far it can project power. The Type 004 would be a quantum leap, far larger, nuclear-powered, carrying more aircraft, and operating deeper into the open ocean without needing frequent refueling. If Fujian was China's first real carrier, the Type 004 may be its version of a carrier fleet's crown jewel. Though not officially confirmed yet, but the satellite imagery, Chinese media leaks, and the defense think tank assessments suggest that the Type 004 aircraft carrier will have the following groundbreaking features. Displacement and size. With an estimated 120,000 ton displacement, the Type 004 could become the largest carrier ever attempted by China, rivaling and possibly even surpassing the US supercarriers. This scale would allow for more aircraft, larger hangars, and improved operational sustainability. Nuclear propulsion. The ship is expected to be nuclear powered, most likely using pressurized water reactors or advanced reactor designs. This would grant the carrier virtually unlimited range, enabling sustained high-speed operations and long deployments far from Chinese shores. Electromagnetic Catapult System Building on the Fujian's breakthrough, Type 004 may feature next-generation catapults, more powerful than its predecessors. These systems would launch heavier aircraft, support higher sortie rates, and accommodate future unmanned or specialized aircrafts. Air Wing Capacity The carrier's projected air wing of up to 110 aircraft would mark a massive leap in operational capability. This could include J-35 stealth fighters, KJ-600 early warning aircraft, carrier-based drones, anti-submarine aircraft, multi-purpose helicopters, and even the upcoming sixth-generation J-50 stealth fighters, allowing China to operate multiple squadrons simultaneously across roles from strike to surveillance to fleet defense. Flight Deck and Hangar Design Reports point towards a wider and stronger flight deck, enlarged internal hangars, faster aircraft elevators, and improved deck circulation systems, enabling more efficient launch and recovery cycles and higher operational tempo. Sensors and Defenses The Type 004 is also expected to field cutting-edge sensors, advanced networking systems, and robust command centers. Alongside layered anti-missile defenses, these systems would allow the ship to integrate seamlessly with China's naval and aerospace networks, making it a true hub of power projection. All these features combined suggest that the Type 004 could become far more than just another aircraft carrier in China's inventory, but would serve as a floating fortress capable of sustaining power projection operations across the Indo-Pacific and beyond. China's Type 004 supercarrier will be a real game-changer. At a projected 120,000 tons displacement, nuclear-powered, and capable of carrying up to 110 aircrafts, it would be the largest warship China has ever built, rivaling America's Ford-class supercarriers. But what would such a vessel mean strategically, for the United States, its allies, and especially Taiwan? The implications of Type 004 stretch far beyond its size. With nuclear propulsion, it would enjoy true blue water endurance, sailing for years without refueling and sustaining strike groups deep in the Pacific and Indian Ocean. Its electromagnetic catapult system and massive air wing could generate high sortie rates, launching stealth fighters, drones, and airborne early warning planes at a tempo never before seen in China's Navy. In scale and concept, 
It mirrors the US Navy's Gerald Ford class. The Ford class aircraft carriers displaces about 100,000 tons and field around 75 aircrafts. By contrast, Type 004 is rumored to handle more than 100. Although the real difference lies in experience. The US has nearly 80 years of continuous carrier warfare expertise, global logistics, and combat-tested doctrine. China, while advancing fast, is still learning the effective use of carrier strike groups. Yet, the very existence of a ship this size narrows the psychological and strategic gap. For the first time in decades, America could face a near-peer rival at sea. For US strategy, this means higher risks in contested waters. US carrier strike groups will now need stronger anti-stealth sensors, longer-range strike options, and more frequent deployments to deter or counter a Chinese carrier strike group presence. For regional powers like Japan, India, and Australia, it raises the stakes of any naval standoff in the Indo-Pacific, fueling an arms race in submarines, missiles, and counter-carrier tactics. As for Taiwan, the danger is immediate. A Type 004 sailing east of the island could project stealth fighters and surveillance aircraft directly into its skies. Combined with China's missile forces, submarine patrols, and China's land-based fighter jets could overwhelm Taiwan's defenses during a crisis or blockade. The ship would act as a floating forward base, shrinking Taiwan's warning time and complicating any US rescue or intervention plan. In short, the Type 004 isn't just a warship, it's a strategic signal. It represents Beijing's intent to push its influence far beyond the South China Sea, to challenge the US dominance in the Pacific Ocean, and to alter the balance of power over Taiwan and the region as a whole. If China succeeds, the Type 004 would become the first ever true rival to America's supercarriers, reshaping naval strategy across the Indo-Pacific. But the risks are immense, and success is not 100% guaranteed, as building a nuclear power supercarrier for the first time is an extremely difficult task on its own. The world is now watching, not if China will build it, but how fast and how well it will build. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe our channel for more videos and updates.